Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, September 27th, 2020. We are still in Unit 1, which is entitled Struggles with Love. Struggles with Love. From the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, our lesson title is Love Prevails Over All. Our devotional reading comes from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Background scripture comes from Genesis, chapter 23, the entire chapter of 23, and then chapter 45, verses 1 to 15. And our printed or lesson passage comes from Genesis 45, verses 1 to 8, and then 10 to 15. Our key verse is verse 5, 45, uh, chapter 45, verse 5, rather. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither for God, did send me before you to preserve life. Again, that's Genesis 45 and 5. Our lesson has, outline has two divisions after the introduction. The first is love reveals itself. That's covered between Genesis 45 verses 1 to 8. And the second is love prevails. And that's covered between chapter 45, verses 10 to 15. From our standard commentary, our lesson title is Revealed Love. Revealed Love and Additional Aims, or number one, recount the occasion. I'm sorry, I neglected to read the aims from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly. So let me go back. Those aims are, number one, understand how Joseph viewed his past mistreatment at the hands of his brothers. Number two, recognize how God might be at work in your difficult circumstances. And number three, respond to mistreatment, not with vengeance, but with creative transforming initiatives. Now, again, from the standard commentary, the lesson title, again, is Revealed Love. Additional aims are, number one, recount the occasion on which Joseph revealed his identity to his brothers. Number two, explain the importance of Joseph's understanding of God's plan when seeking to reassure his brothers. And number three, plan and implement best steps and actions in modeling love and forgiveness. Standard lesson outline has three divisions. The first is revealing identity, Genesis 45, 1 to 8. The second, relaying instructions, verses uh, 10 to 13. And the third, reaching out in love, chapter 45, verses 14 and 15. I know most of you probably follow the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, so we are going to follow that outline uh, primarily. Uh, we're going to have a little um, back, give a little background here, and then we will have a short word of prayer and get into our verse by verse discussion of the text. So, hopefully, you did read the background uh, scriptures. The entire chapter 43, uh, our lesson was taken from chapter 42 last week, and that is when, if you will recall, uh, Joseph's brothers were sent to Egypt by their father Jacob to get grain, to get food, because he had heard that there was food in, in Egypt, and that is when Joseph recognized his brothers. Uh, we'll say more about that in a few minutes. Uh, 43 and then 45 verses 1 to 15 are important uh, to read as background. And actually, uh, 44 wouldn't have been bad to read 44 as well to get the full background and put this lesson 
into proper context. So we may be referring to some things that happened uh, in the intervening chapters between 42 and 45 as we go through the lesson today. Um, and what happened, as you will recall from last week, is that uh, Joseph um, uh, spoke roughly to his brothers. He accused them at least three times of being spies and said they'd, they'd come to spy out the land or the nakedness of the land or the weak spots in the land. And uh, this he did to test his brothers to see whether there had been any change in them since they uh, sold him into slavery. Uh, and uh, he was able to hear and understand what they were saying. Uh, they were not able to recognize him, number one, because he was dressed as an Egyptian, probably was clean shaven, maybe had his head shaved as well, uh, and also spoke through an interpreter. Uh, and so Joseph eventually uh, uh, tells them that they will have to prove themselves, to prove that they are not spies by bringing their younger brother down to him and that he was going to keep one of their brothers bound until they did that. Uh, if you will recall, he overheard uh, part of their uh, conversation expressing their remorse and what they did to uh, Joseph uh, when he was just 17 years old. And Reuben, if you will recall, said that I, you should have done what I told you and not done this and I came, I intended to rescue him. And so Joseph overheard that and he heard that Reuben uh, uh, really did not, was not really party to selling him into slavery. And so he chose the second oldest, not Reuben, but Simeon to bind and hold and keep in Egypt until such time as his brothers would bring uh, their youngest brother back to prove ostensibly that um, they were not spies. Now, you will recall also that he had their money restored to them, placed in the miles of their grain sacks. And when they got back to camp, in fact, the first encampment, one of them discovered the money and they were afraid when they got all the way back to Canaan, they recognized that all of them had their money restored and they were petrified uh, and afraid to go back for that reason, of believing that they would be accused of being thieves. But over time, uh, they did run out of the food that they had gotten, and Jacob said, go and get us and buy us some more food and take double the money. And they said, we, we can't go back unless we bring our youngest brother, Benjamin. And at first, Jacob really had a problem with that. He said, no, it, you know, this will uh, this will kill me. You know, this will this will bring down my gray hairs to the grave. But eventually he relented uh, when uh, Judah uh, said that he would um, he would ensure that uh, Benjamin was brought back safely. So that's a little background. Uh, just to kind of fast forward through the rest of it. So they came back to Egypt. They had twice the money. Uh, Joseph was still um, speaking roughly to them, but he, he recognized his brother Benjamin. Uh, he had a, uh, a dinner prepared for them, uh, and he set a ways off, as, as did the Egyptians set a ways off from them, but he could overhear what they were saying. And... Uh, and, and eventually he loaded them up with grain again, had their money restored, and had his silver uh, cup placed in Benjamin's sack. And then he sent his, uh, his uh, uh, second, at, he sent his servant, I guess his lead servant, to track them down and to accuse them of having stolen uh, this silver goblet and... Uh, uh, they were going to imprison the one whose sack they found it in. And, of course, they found it in, in Benjamin's sack, and they accused him of being the th thief. And anyway, they brought them all back to Egypt, uh, and Joseph was had them really uh, on pins and needles, uh, thinking that they might even kill Benjamin. And, uh, and so he heard, again, Joseph overheard their remorse how sorry they were, and uh, and when he uh, when he accused Benjamin of stealing the uh, 
uh, the goblet and said he was going to have to remain there and be his servant. Apparently, uh, Judah made an impassionate plea. Uh, beginning, we see that in chapter 44, beginning at verse 18, and really continuing through the end of uh, the chapter where he says, you know, he had, uh, 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 he was, uh, had given his father assurance that he would bring his father back and, and, and his, his father's life was bound up in the, in, in the life of the child. And he said, uh, his other brother, his brother had uh, been killed earlier and, and, and so forth. And he said, if he did not, he said, take him instead, let him be his servant instead of Benjamin, but let Benjamin go back to his father. Anyway, he was very passionate about that. And this, this passion that Judah expressed and all of them, all the other brothers, uh, no doubt felt the same way. And Joseph was able to see that, uh, that was, uh, what, uh, convinced Joseph that they had really had a change in their heart, that, that God had changed their hearts and changed their character. And then he couldn't control himself, uh, emotionally. He had some outbreaks before outbursts before, but in secret, but now he becomes overwhelmed with his emotion and his, and his compassion. And that's where our lesson picks up. And sorry for all the, uh, the long background, but if you did not read <laughs> the chapters in between, uh, the background scripture, uh, hopefully that was helpful. So let's just have a quick word of, of prayer. Father, we do thank and praise you for yet another opportunity to study your precious word. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercy. Lord, we thank you that even in the midst of the pan pandemic and every all the unrest and everything going on in our world today, that we can rest, Lord, in your peace, or the peace that surpasses the understanding of this world, recognizing that you are fully in control, Lord, and our trust is not in man, but our trust is in you in everything and for everything. Lord, we ask that you would bless uh, those who have uh, been impacted by this, uh, this virus, Lord, those who may have contracted it or have lost loved ones to it, Lord. We pray for their comfort. We pray for their peace. We pray for the healing of those who may have contracted it. We pray for those who are on the front lines, Lord, uh, trying to aid those who are suffering with it and those who are doing the research, Lord. You know all of our needs, Lord. And we just lift uh, uh, all, all the needs up to you, knowing that the judge of all the earth will do right. And we thank you for this lesson today, Lord. We pray that we will get out of it what you intended for us to get out of it, Lord. Uh, that we would see the typology in this lesson, Lord, that Joseph was a type of Christ, Lord, and that uh, he was the salvation for his family, that he expressed the love of God and his forgiveness to his brothers, Lord, as you forget, as you expressed your love on the cross for us, even while we were sinners, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we, we've we read the aims of both the adult quarterly, the faith pathway adult quarterly, and we've read the aims of the standard. And as I was uh, studying the lesson, I uh, a couple of themes came to mind. Uh, uh, of course, uh, many of you know that Joseph is believed to have been a type of Christ. Uh, you know, in the Old Testament, there's a lot of typology and uh, he meaning that uh, he resembled Christ in uh, many of the things that he suffered. And he did. Uh, we'll maybe talk, maybe talk more about that as we get further into the lesson. Uh, his his self, he was the salvation of his uh, his people and that he brings them uh, ultimately to Egypt and saves them from. Uh, destitution because of the great famine that was underway. Uh, we also see this love theme that uh, despite the way he was used uh, or despite the way he was uh, 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 mistreated, if you will, by his brothers, uh, that he he loves, he becomes overwhelmed with the love that he has for him. And only God can put that kind of love uh, in the heart of a person, the love that will forgive those who are even their enemies or have been their enemies. Uh, uh, the type of love that's described in 1 Corinthians 13, particularly verses 7 and 8. Uh, and also uh, the love that uh, 
Uh, Jesus said we are to have for our enemies, we are to do good uh, to those who despitefully use them, and in so doing, we will heap coals of fire on their heads. Uh, then, then also we see the providence of God. I mean, between verses 5 and 8, we'll see that uh, Joseph actually mentions that God sent him to Egypt, that this was by God's, according to God's plan, that he sent me ahead to preserve life. Uh, he gives all the glory to God for the honor and everything that he has, uh, that has been bestowed on him in Egypt. Uh, and so let's get into our lesson here. Um, we're going to read our first passage from uh, uh, for from the I'm sorry the first division of the quarterly which is love reveals itself uh, chapter 45 verses 1 to 8 then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him and he cried Cause every man to go out from he, from me, and there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren, and he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it, and Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall be neither earing nor harvest or plowing or reaping. Verse 7, and God sent me before you to preserve you a, poster a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God, and he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. So let's back up to verse 1, which reads again, Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while he made himself known to his brethren. Now, Joseph has uh, gathered enough evidence, uh, hearing uh, his brother's remorse, uh, and then hearing this very passionate plea that Judah makes for Benjamin and, 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 and because of what uh, Benjamin's imprisonment or enslavement would do to his father uh, to, to be convinced that uh, there has been a, a, a change in their hearts and there's been a change in their character. And so he is now ready to reveal himself to his brethren. And uh, and I imagine um, he needed some time uh, while he was testing them to think about just how he would do this because, you know, as 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 good as we uh, understand Joseph to have been, I mean, he was human, and Joseph probably harbored some some pretty nasty thoughts as to what he wanted to do or say to his brothers if he ever saw them again over some 22 years. It had been 22 years since he'd been sold in this slavery at 17. He's 39 now. So he he knows he's going to, he, for, for, for whatever reason, he doesn't want his servants to, to see um, uh, him uh, break down. You know, they might sense that as some, some weakness. Uh, and then also there may be some other reason why he dismisses his servants while he reveals himself to his brothers. Verse 2 says, And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Actually, from the NIV, it says, And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. So, now, and I, I imagine those servants were wondering, what is going on in there? Should we 
and maybe one of them uh, might have peeped uh, peeped his head in to make sure that Joseph was all right. But uh, Joseph has just just lost control. Uh, he is uh, uh, so overwhelmed with emotion here. And we know he had been overcome by emotions a couple of times. Well, last week, verse 42, 24. And also if you read the background scripture, verse 43, 30. But now he he, he was able to compose himself. He, he, he went aside or went into another room and composed himself and came back. But now he's just letting it all loose. Uh, and uh, verse 3a says, And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Now understand now to this point, he has been looking like an Egyptian, like a very wealthy royal Egyptian, but like an Egyptian with the headdress and all of that, I'm sure, uh, dressed like one and shaven and so forth. Uh, and he's been speaking through an interpreter. And, and obviously, uh, well, most likely his brothers didn't think that they understood their language, Hebrew, if it was that. And so he... He actually um, speaks in their native tongue when he reveals himself. I am Joseph. And uh, he and then he, he quickly asks, doth my father yet live? Now, he's already asked them about their father, and they have told him, yeah, he's fine. He's he's healthy and he's doing well. And, 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 and perhaps to make sure that they weren't just telling him, hey, everything is fine, so that... Uh, he wouldn't think that they had troubles uh, back home. Uh, he is asking them again uh, for uh, to make sure that their father is still alive. Verse 3, I mean, verse 3c says, And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. Let's look at that in the NIV. And it said, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. I mean, they were, uh, you, you can imagine, first of all, the disbelief, uh, is this real? There was a surreal experience there because they, they were really probably struggling to, to recognize him facially. And at the same time, they were tell, asking themselves, "Well, if it is, if it, you know, if it is Joseph, what in the world have we gotten ourselves into?" So they were just awestruck, and they could not say anything. And so Joseph realized that, and he goes on, and he says, "And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you.'" And they came near. Probably they were standing at some distance, and I don't know how close they got when he said, "Come near me." but closer, closer, close enough rather to get a better look at him. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother. Again, he's speaking in Hebrew or speaking in their native tongue, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now that's a, that's a real clue. First of all, he knows his name or the name that he was known by to them, Joseph. We know that he has an Egyptian name that his servants has been calling him by. Uh, and um, and then he knows that they sold him, Joseph, into slavery, into Egypt. And so they are really uh, terrified at this point, I'm sure. And, uh, and, and also remembering the cruel uh, deed that they, they did uh, to him. Verse 5, Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. That's the first of three times when Joseph speaks of the providence of God. God uh, is the only one that knows the ending from the beginning, and he foreknew uh, and actually gave some indication uh, of uh, what it was going to happen to Joseph and how his brothers were going to relate to him at some point, and even his father and mother for that point, uh, uh, in that through the dreams, through the dreams that uh, he had given Joseph as a teenager. So uh, he he is saying, "Don't let me let me read that again from the NIV, which says, and now do not be distressed." 
and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me here ahead of you. So God sent Joseph there and certainly to save uh, the descendants of Abraham. I mean, his family and the promise uh, line or lineage. Uh, but, I, but I'm convinced also to save the many other thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of lives that were saved uh, through the wisdom that God gave to Joseph uh, in storing up the grain for seven, for the, during the seven years of plenty and distributing that grain during the seven years of famine. So he did not only bless um, the descendants of, of Abraham, and, and that was maybe a micro, uh, a little um, glimpse of how the descendants of Abraham would bless all the families of the world in that God gave the wisdom to Joseph that really saved the lives of, of a countless number of people. Let's move on. Verse 6, For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall be neither earing nor harvest. And from the uh, NIV, plowing or reaping. So Joseph is telling his brothers, look, we are not even halfway through this famine. Uh, it, it is bad. It's going to be bad for another five years. And uh, eventually, I'm sure he told them how he knew this, that God had revealed this to him in a dream. Uh, but again, that was part of the, the providence of God. In fact, God may have orchestrated this, this whole famine for this purpose, you know, to reconcile this family, to bring this family into Egypt under circumstances that he orchestrated in fulfillment of uh, what he had told Abraham uh, back in Genesis 15, and that was that uh, his descendants was, were going to sojourn in a land for 430 years. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and so this, this, this was all part of the, pro, the providence, the providence of provision that God made in advance uh, for his people. Verse 7, and God sent me, again, this is the third, a second time rather, he's referencing God sending him, and God sent me before you to preserve your posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. He sent him before them to preserve their posterity or preserve you a remnant, the king, uh, the NIV says, or those, their descendants, those who would descend from them, okay, not just them, but to keep the, keep the, the Abrahamic seed alive. Uh, that is why God sent him there. And again, that was in keeping with uh, God's promise to Abraham. And, I, and, and, and we can read that in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, and then Genesis 17, 1 to 8. Uh, and uh, we understand that, that um, again, God's, his, his sovereign will is beyond our understanding. Uh, but when he does, he has revealed his sovereign will to Joseph. Joseph gets it. Joseph understands, hey, there was a reason for the harsh treatment of my brothers, uh, that my brothers uh, treated me with and uh, them selling me into slavery and, and the years that I suffered hardship. And, 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 and we need to understand that as well. I know we, sometimes we use Romans um, 8, 28 uh, under improper circumstances, but this is really uh, a, 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 um, a, this is really a um, deliverance on that, promise that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. That hardship that Joseph suffered for years, the imprisonment, the being falsely accused of trying to rape um, uh, uh, 
uh, the Egyptian's wife, our first wife. Uh, and we need to recognize our own, in our own lives, how God may be using dire circumstances uh, to accomplish his greater will in our lives. Sometimes uh, we need to suffer to focus our prayer uh, life, uh, to focus us on him more uh, and, and and more clearly and, and to remove other distractions. So we need to understand that God has a plan for our lives as he had a plan for the uh, seed of Abraham and how he planned to use uh, Joseph in accomplishing that plan. He has a plan for our lives as well. He has a sovereign will for our lives. And we want to, to the extent we can understand that, but when we don't understand, we simply want to trust him. And he's talking about this. He's going to save them by a great deliverance. Okay. He's going to bring them down. Uh, his, uh, one of Jacob's son is, is the, uh, is the ruler of the land. He's going to be talking about the authority that he has. He's going to set them up in a, in a, a very lush area, Goshen. And that's going to be a great deliverance from the famine that they are suffering in Canaan now. Verse 8. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. Now, we use that expression, to God be the glory. Hey, Joseph has it right. Joseph hasn't done any of this. Joseph was... We know he was a handsome man. We know he was probably intelligent, uh, uh, but none, but neither of those things uh, 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 got him where he is at this moment. Uh, God brought him through suffering and to uh, this pinnacle that he's at in uh, in terms of leadership in Egypt. Uh, when he talks about being a father to Pharaoh, that was not an uncommon term to use uh, when it spoke of uh, in, in ancient times it described someone who served as a as an advisor to another and perhaps uh, provided fatherly advice and that was the the role that Joseph was playing was uh, was in if you will with regard to Pharaoh and certainly uh, he was over his entire household. We remember from last week's lesson, or actually we go back a couple of lessons, where Pharaoh, when he revealed the dream to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, hey, we can't find anybody as wise as you. And at that point, he elevated him to the highest uh, position in the land, second only to him, and put him over all of his household and all of his, all of his affairs. And he so he was ruler in the land. No one was to lift a hand without consulting Joseph, he said. So he was ruler of all Egypt. He was the prime minister, if you will. Now, we're going to move into our second passage. And that passage, again, was entitled, Love Reveals Itself. Now, who's doing the revealing uh, of himself? That is Joseph. And Joseph is revealing his love. We're going to see that intensify as we go further into the lesson text. So the second division is entitled, Love Prevails. And that begins at verse 10 and goes through 15. Let's read from starting at verse 10. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be there unto me, near me rather, near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, and thy herds, and all that thou hast, and there will be, and there rather I will nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and of all that ye have seen. And ye shall haste and bring down my father hither. And I will and he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. Moreover he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them. And after that his brethren talked with him. Okay, so let's back up now to verse ten. 
and let's pick up there. And again, um, uh, he has, um, well, I didn't say this, but verse nine basically is a reiteration. It tells him to hurry and go up to Egypt and go up to his father and say to him, thus saith your son, Joseph. And, and he, uh, that God has made him Lord of all Egypt, come down to me and not tarry. So, uh, basically there's a, reiter a reiteration is what, of what has been said. And he says it again here in verse 10, he says, and thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen and thou shalt be near me, thou and thy children and thy children's children and thy flocks and thy herds and all that thou hast. Now, Joseph has the authority to settle his family uh, in this land. Uh, this land is, uh, 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 was a lush area in the Nile Delta, uh, good for grazing. It was roomy. Uh, they would have plenty of room there uh, to settle. And um, uh, Joseph had the authority to settle them there without asking, without asking the Pharaoh, by the way. The Pharaoh later does, uh, certainly hardly agrees with them uh, settling in that land. And part of the reason was they... Uh, they were uh, not probably allowed to live too close to the Egyptians or intermingle with them because uh, shepherding uh, was thought to be something unclean by the Egyptians. And uh, that was probably part of the reason. And then it was good that they had some separation between them uh, so that there was not much intermingling and uh, uh, the uh, adoption of any of the seed of Abraham's of the the pantheon of gods that the Egyptians had. So it was good, the area was good for grazing and uh, and for growing crops. Verse 11, And there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty or become destitute. So he's letting them know, you know, you guys made a couple of trips here. Uh, this famine is going to be going on for another five years. You're going to be running back and forth. You're going to run out of money. Uh, you're going to have to sell your flocks. You're going to have to sell everything you have to just to stay alive. Uh, just as the Egyptians did. If you if you read all of this, uh, the chapters uh, concerning uh, this famine, uh, you know that the Egyptians were buying grain first. And when they ran out of money, they gave their they they eventually gave their lands uh, to the pharaoh. I mean, to Egypt. Uh, so he didn't want to see them become destitute or uh, poverty stricken uh, during this famine. Verse twelve. You can see for yourselves, and you can, and so can my brother Benjamin that it is really I who am speaking to you. That's from the NIV. So he has uh, hopefully convinced them at this point. Maybe they've recognized his facial features. Uh, maybe uh, uh, they, they understand because of, you know, the knowledge that he has about what happened to Joseph. Who else, you know, you have to, this has to be Joseph. Who else could it be? And then, of course, he's speaking in their tongue, in their language, and he knows of their father. And he even knew his younger brother's name. So he calls his younger brother by name. And so uh, he's just making sure that they are sure of who he is at this point. Verse 12, I'm 13 rather. Tell my father about all the honor accorded me in Egypt and about everything you have seen and bring my father down here quickly. This is verse 13. Now, Joseph still, no doubt, loves his father, uh, really desires to see his father, and, uh, and his father, uh, it's a wonder, didn't have a heart attack when he found out that Joseph was, was still alive. Uh, and he wants to uh, his, his father to be cared for first and foremost, doesn't want to see his father suffer in this famine, but then also he wants to see what God has done through him, uh, uh, and and he again attributes everything to God. This honor that has been accorded him, uh, uh, or lavished on him, if you will, he wants his father to see that. 
uh, and not to be proud of him so much, but to, but to praise God for what he had done through him. And then uh, verse 14, he says, Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him and wept. Now the emotions again are flaring up, and Joseph uh, feels a compulsion to embrace first his the brother uh, that is by his mother, his full brother, uh, and, uh, and 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 to, and to basically weep. Uh, this is a uh, uh, this is probably uh, he's probably weeping because of the lost years. Uh, he may be weeping because of of gladness, certainly because of gladness, and and the providence of God, what God has done uh, in his in his providence to bring them back together, and because of his love. And let me say this: um, it was probably easy to weep, uh, to hug and weep, Benjamin. It was probably again Joseph is human, more difficult for him to hug and <clears throat> and weep on the necks of his other brothers and to kiss them, which he does in verse 4, 15. It says, and he kissed all his brothers and wept over them after his brothers talked with him, or afterwards, rather, his brothers talked with him. Now, um, we, we we need to understand that that kind of, of forgiveness, the ability to forgive and to love his brothers despite how they had treated him, in his early years, in fact, shaped the years of, of, of suffering that he endured uh, comes from God. I mean, that, that, is not, uh, that is not of our human nature, okay? That's the agape, that's the love of God that uh, surpasses the understanding of, of man. And, and again, it, uh, Paul gives a great description of it in verse, in chapter 13, rather, of 1 Corinthians. And he talks about he gives he talks about the characteristics of that love, uh, that love that he says beginning at verse four suffers long. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And I left off there at verse uh, 8a. Love never fails. And so this is the love of God being expressed. So God has, has worked through uh, Joseph in reconciling uh the family reconciling uh, the brothers to him, and uh, and of course there's going to be a great reunion once his father and and the whole uh, clan uh, comes to Egypt, and 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 again uh, it says afterwards his brothers talked, and I imagine, you know, hey, what what do you think they talked about? They talked about the last 22 years. <laughs> Joseph probably talked about everything that he'd been through because of them. And how God had blessed him in, in the midst of uh, what could have been much worse, even when he was uh, a slave in Potiphar's house, how Potiphar had put him over everything that he owned and how his wife had falsely accused him and, and his years in prison. He probably went through all of that with him and showed them how God, more specifically how God was working providentially through him and, of course, ultimately to bring them to save their lives and to save the lives of many others. So our takeaways again from this is we want to recognize, <clears throat> again, uh, the typology here. Uh, Joseph was uh, a type of Christ in that uh, he, his suffering uh, ultimately led to the salvation of his family. Uh, Christ's suffering on the cross and laying down his life for us uh, led to our spiritual salvation. When we speak of salvation, it means deliverance. In the case of Joseph's family, it was their physical deliverance from starvation, from famine. In the case of the deliverance of salvation that Christ bought for us, it was spiritual salvation. It was the saving of our souls. From what? From the penalty of sin, from the power of sin, and ultimately from the very presence of sin. When we 
are translated from from and when I, when we are given our glorified bodies, and and then secondly, uh, we want to see throughout this passage or throughout the passage that we just studied, the providence of God. I mean, God's sovereign will uh, uh, is over all, and God works things out in intricate detail uh, that. You know, he doesn't have to reveal to us. When we can see what he's doing, hey, it's great. But when we can't, as I said, he simply wants us to trust him. And if we trust God, I, my, my, my brother, I, I have to take a minute here and say something about my brother Deacon. Darnay Taylor uh, once told me that, you know, uh, if, if you are trusting God, if you're trusting God totally and completely, uh, even if you're going the wrong way, God's going to make it the right way. Now, you, now, I don't want you all to misunderstand that, but I understood where he was coming from. He said, if you're going the wrong way and you're trusting God completely to guide you, God will make it the right way, okay? And I'm not talking about doing anything mischievous or evil or anything like that, but if you are unknowingly going the wrong way but trusting God. And then thirdly, we want to look at the love, the love that motivated the forgiveness of his brothers. And that was the agape love, the love of God uh, that Christ certainly demonstrated uh, uh, on the cross. From, uh, John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we know that from Romans uh, 5 and 6 that he loved us, that he died for us while we were yet sinners. He didn't wait for us to clean ourselves up, clean our acts up. He died for us while we were sinners. And he died for us even before we were born sinners and before we committed our first sin. And so we just thank God for this uh, opportunity to share in this lesson. And we pray that um, you've all gotten something from it. And uh, as we, as I often pray, as we understand God's word and what he intends for us to get out of it, uh, we pray that our faith would be increased and we pray that our obedience uh, to his word would be increased. So we want to be more loving, more forgiving, and more trusting of the providence of God. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again.